We thank You that Your Word is always anointed. You're destroying yokes and setting captives free, Father. Today, we, we ask You for understanding. Would you pray that with me? God, give me understanding. Come on, y'all. Say it a little louder. Come on. God, give me understanding. Hallelujah. The Word of God says to ask for wisdom. It says, with all your getting of wisdom, get understanding. So let's ask one more time. Father, give us understanding today. Hallelujah. We just ask for, our, for Your Word to penetrate our heart. Father, that would, would grow up in us, producing 30, 60, 100 fold what it's intended to produce. Thank You for Your dreams. Thank You, Lord God, for bringing us into a place of, of, uh, of newness. And Father, dreams fulfilled in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So praise God. I, I like what Jenny was talking about this morning. He was talking about New Year's resolutions. And I was thinking, oh man, he's going to preach my sermon. But, uh, you know, a lot of people make New Year's resolutions. What are some of the top ones they make? Y'all, help me out. Lose weight. Eat healthier. Diet. Exercise. Organize. How about finances? Are there any financial goals? A lot of people make financial goals. They, they want to have a certain savings amount. People have uh, dreams like fun goals. This year I want to uh, take more time to relax. This year I want to take more time to go someplace nice. You know, travel, yeah. Um, but there's other kinds of... Uh, maybe, maybe you're working on your relationships. So all these are New Year's resolutions. And people, uh, you know, the other day the Lord, I woke up and I believe it was the Holy Spirit. And, and in my heart I, I heard this, that people are working on themselves without realizing who they really are already. Okay? So in Christ Jesus, we are somebody special. Amen. I mean, in Christ Jesus, I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read a couple of scriptures here for you to remember who you already are in Christ. You don't even uh, you, you know, people are working on themselves, uh, but God has already done some things in you, body, soul, and spirit. A lot of those things we're working on where we are body or our soul. But here's the deal in the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, He has already made us so much. And I, I want to read this one scripture. I, I did a lot of research on on this for uh, for good fish, bad fish. And if you'll take time to read through these things, there's seven of each category. Maybe, maybe there's thirteen of each category. I think it, there are. Um, but I can. I am who the Word says I am. I have what the Word says I have. And I can do what the Word says I can do. Amen. Amen. Alright, so these are the different categories. And, and here's the scripture I want to read to you. Um, it's not going to be on the wall, but it's uh, Ephesians 2.10. It says, I am God's masterpiece. I love the New Living Translation. Another version says, I am His workmanship. We are His workmanship. This one says, I am His masterpiece. It says, we, He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. How many of y'all are born again? How many of y'all are new creations? So He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. So that is going to fold right into everything we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about dreams. But here's the deal. We can do the good things He planned for us long ago. So God didn't... You know, Ross didn't give his heart to Jesus and then the Lord looked at Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father and He says, now what are we going to do? We, we finally got Him into the kingdom. Now what are we going to do? No. See, God had everything planned out for Ross and for you and for me from the day we were born. He called us before we were born. He put in us the gifts that He designed us with before we were born. Is anybody getting this today? Everybody with me? Alright. So, he, Ross, when he gave his heart to Jesus, when you gave your heart to Jesus, I won't pick on Ross anymore, when you gave your heart to Jesus, you got on track. We, like sheep, we've all gone astray 
that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There is a way that seems right to men in the end that ends in death, but Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And so when you gave your heart to Jesus, you finally figured out the way He wants us to live, he, the, the life path that He had for you. So now you're living in the sweet spot of life by just following Jesus. Amen. So He created us a, a new uh, in Christ Jesus to do the good things He planned for us long ago. Then there's other scriptures like yours. Prized possession. People are working on themselves. They're, they're trying to improve themselves. But they don't even know they are His prized possession. They are His masterpiece. They're blameless. They're complete. They're chosen. You didn't choose God. God chose you. Amen? And, and you, you finally realized He chose you. You said, yes, I'll join your team. Amen. I'll join your family. You're forgiven. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the whole world. Amen. The whole world's sins are forgiven. The people who get in on that are the people who say, my sins are forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. I'll receive that free gift. Amen. You're free. Amen. How many, how many are thankful that you're free? You're not under bondage of sin. You're not under control of sin anymore. When Jesus died, He took away the power of sin. People in this world don't have that power. They don't have that liberty. They still follow the, the pull of the sin in their hearts and in their lives that draws them into submission. And whatever you submit to masters you. And so we have been free. Amen. We have been free. Uh, we're right with God. You're a child of God. Amen. We could go on and on. You're led by the Spirit of God. You're powerful since God's power is in you. You're pleasing to God. That's a big one. That's a big one. Pleasing to God. How many want to just please Him even more and more? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. How many of y'all are dependent on God? So there's a lot of scriptures here that, that we can look at that tell us who we are in Christ Jesus. And, and so, uh, people want to be something different, but they're ignorant of who they already are uh, in Christ Jesus. If they've given their heart to Jesus, that's who I'm talking about. Believers right now. Amen. So, we can nourish how we feel, or we can nourish what we believe. And we do that by our words. And when we nourish what we believe, then we start going down a whole trail here of being able to dream. Amen. So all these are are contained. They all work together. Um, you know, I was going to take some time and review, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. But this series is, is, has, you know, while I'm preaching a series, it's so alive in me, no matter what we've been talking about. I'm a friend of God. Rise. Uh, the different sermons that we've gone through, these different studies that we've gone through, this one right here, I'm so in love with the word on this. Hope for the holidays. You know, casting all your cares. Can we show that scripture? 1 Peter 5, 7. And, and let's just say that together here. Uh, let's, let's say this together. It's not showing for some reason. There it is. Alright, here we go, guys. Are you ready to say this with me? Yes. Alright, I like this. They did this at John Hagee's church, so I figure if he's doing it, maybe he's doing something right there, right? So we'll, we'll do it together today. Amen? Here we go. Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. Amen? That's 1 Peter 5, 7. You know, God cares about you. And so, it's easy for us to, to realize, once we realize, get the revelation, once we get the understanding that He really cares for us, then giving Him our cares, giving Him our worries, we trust Him with it. Amen? He's trustworthy. So that, that just draws that out of us. So we're going to talk about dreams. You know, dreams are what change the world. Uh, this, this world around us needs to be changed. How many are thankful for dreams that God gives us? Put something inside of us that, to help make things better, make things different. In this world, while we're living here, we're salt and light. We're supposed to be a preservative and we're supposed to be Somebody who speaks the truth and helps the people who are blind that don't aren't able to choose. They they hear the word. I'm getting ahead of myself, but they, they hear the word from you and me. And then they, they have an opportunity to allow that word to produce in their life. So a, a dream changes the world, but a dream can be frustrating. A dream can be frustrating 
but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. So let's just take a look at what we're looking at this morning. So first of all, a dream can change the world. Who's ever heard of a guy named uh, um, Disney? Walt Disney. Anybody ever heard of Walt Disney? So on the day they dedicated, I think it was Disneyland, uh, the story goes that uh, one of the, uh, I, I, I can't remember their name, but he was a reporter, and he's standing next to Disney's wife, and uh, he said, it, isn't it a shame that he's not here to see this, because he had passed away. On the day they were dedicating it, he just passed away uh, recently, and, and she says, he did see it. That's why we're seeing it today. This man had a dream on the inside of him, and he kept at it until it became a reality for the rest of us to see it. There's things on the inside of us that are invisible that God has put on the inside of us, but there's, there's, a, there's a way that He puts it on the inside of us. And we're going to look at that here. But the thing is, dreams change the world. I was talking to somebody over the Christmas uh, holiday in, in December. Um, you know, we had dinner with he and his family. They were, they were from Karis, and, and Chris was, I guess it was a Thanksgiving time. Uh, and he wants to be a Christian Disney. So what do you mean by that? He said, uh, I want to, I, my dream is, and he started out laying out his dream. And it is to have a Christian Netflix as part of it. Uh, and he has a name for it and everything. And he said, I just need $60 million. <laughs> and, you know, he, he's around people who have $60 million. He lives, uh, he lives a, pretty close to Kanye West. I mean, this is a man who has done things that everybody in this room uh, probably has been influenced by or, or has, has been around. But he wants to, uh, he is serving God with all of his heart. And his dream now is to take everything that he's done in the world and turn it around and, and, and bring a, a dream to life. Um, and then I, I have a friend named Bill Hightower who's running for congressman. Is that a dream? Praise God, we need more dreamers. <laughs> it will dream that dream. Please. Amen. Probably some... Uh, anyway, so we, we need some, some uh, people who will step up and they'll say, you know, uh, God's put it on the inside of me to dream to be a congressman, congressperson, to lead and to bring about... Can a Christian be a Christian and, and, and uh, be political? Yes. They better be. Come on. Faith and politics are not separate, guys. If you've swallowed that, then there's something that you swallowed that's not of God. Uh, and we're going to get into that this year, I believe, that, that we're going to look at how faith should affect your politics. And, and um, they, they try to keep us quiet on all that. You know, I have a, a friend, Melanie and I have a friend who's a dreamer. And she and her husband uh, are successful roofers. He's a roofer, and she was successful in running restaurants. And you know, God put it in her heart. She has no point of, of history with this, but... Uh, human human trafficking became a big deal, uh, and it, it kept coming up to her heart and mind. So she found out about the statistics and what was going on with with human trafficking, and and it just disturbed her. She couldn't let go of it. You know, she has a dream to build a home called Bochy's Place, and in this home, she's going to have ten uh, ladies stay. Because 90% of, of girls who are rescued or, or people who are rescued out of human trafficking go right back into it. 90%. Why is that? Because they don't know how to cook. They don't know how to uh, pay their bills. They don't have driver's license. They've been brought up. They've been given heroin in a, in a way to keep them down. To keep They weren't addicted. Somebody held them down and shot them full of this stuff and now they are addicted. This is the kind of things that just started to uh, stand up to her. And she said, you know, i got to do something. She's a restaurant owner, and her husband's a roofer. She started this, this thing called Bochi's Place. And uh, we've had a, a great opportunity to get to know them a little bit better and better. They're dreamers. There's something God has put on the inside of them to, to, uh, to dream. Um, you know, you may have dreams for your family. I had a dream that my sister would come to Jesus. Amen. 
And I, now my dream is that she wouldn't just make a decision and be a convert, but she'd be a disciple. She would learn uh, the, the rhythms of grace for her life. Praise God. Uh, people have dreams for their finances. Why, what is your dream for your finances? Is it just for your four and no more? Or are you thinking more like Joseph who became second in command of the country and he ended up saving Israel when the famine hit? Come on. Come on, somebody. Somebody uh, may have a dream for their health. They may be battling. They may have been battling six years. You may have been like the, the, the woman with a bleeding for 12 years. You may have been 40 years lame. I don't know what you're believing for, but you know what? God is able. He's already paid for it. So when you get the understanding and the revelation grows up inside of you, then you're set free in Jesus' name. Amen? So let's just keep holding on to that. We know it's true. We know God doesn't have any favorites. So if there's anyone in here battling anything physically, but, but and you're saying, you know what, I want to be free. Praise God. Let's just start, start looking at that anew. Uh, believe in God for it. How about the church? Do you have a dream for the church? For Father's House Church. Do you have a dream? For, come on. Do you have a dream for the Father's House Church? Amen. Amen. Do you have a dream for your church to be a place that is the church like you see in Scripture? Amen. Not, not necessarily what everybody else is doing, but do you see it in Scripture and say, you know what, I want to be a part of that. I want to see that happen. Are you praying for your pastor? Are you praying for your leadership? Are you, are you thinking maybe, you know, Lord, I want to teach or I want to get involved in somehow? Praise God. These are dreams, guys. These are dreams. And, and uh, I have dreams for our church. Um, and I have dreams for our county. Praise God. I want to see these things take place. But God has designed each one of us with gifts and callings, like we said earlier, uh, that, that are unique. And they're unique to you because He has a dream for you. Man, when my little girl, my son was born, guess what? Dreams. Man, who are these people going to be? Who are these people going to be? You know, how can I help them to fulfill what God has called them to be? Dreams. Daddies and mommies have dreams for their kids. Our Heavenly Father is no different. He created you dreaming. Thinking, man, guess, guess, guess who Elwin's going to be? Praise God. Amen. So he, he dreamed about us when He created us. Um, so here's what I told Jules and Christopher as they were growing up. Listen. You don't, you don't get to choose who you're going to be. You get to discover who you're going to be. That's a little different than Americana, you know, uh, way of thinking. No, you get to discover. And how many know God's plan is a lot better? You talk to some seniors. Go down to the high school over here and talk to some seniors who are scratching their heads thinking, what in three or four months? Life's about to get real, and I don't have a clue who I am. And my advice to them is just press in to know Jesus because He knows why He created you and, and the gifts. And you know what that means? You following that is going to be the happiest place on earth. Man, Disney World, they say it's the happiest place on earth. Disney World will always be around you in your heart. Amen? Because you'll always be, you'll be following. And you know, uh, I heard Andy Womack talk about this. And, and he said, you know, when people come to him and say, uh, I, I feel like I'm supposed to be a pastor. He said, well, can you do anything else? Can you do anything else? If you can do anything else, do it. Don't get into ministry. And why is that? He said, because... If you can do something else, then it's not in your heart. And you know what? That resonated with me. There's nothing else that I would rather do than what I'm doing right now with y'all. Amen? We're running together. I'm wanting to see everything, every dream fulfilled in y'all's life. Everything that you have, when you guys get a victory, I get a victory. When I get a victory, you get a victory. Amen? And so we're a family together, and we're wanting to see this thing happen. And so as we run together in this next year, the dreams that God's put on us, how, do, how does that clock run so fast? I don't get that, but uh, I think to learn how to talk faster or something. But uh, <laughs> how, how do we know the Word... Hey, how do we know what the dreams are? This right here, the Bible, the B-I-L-E, 
B-I-B-L-E. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, the Bible is the stuff dream. When it hit me, it hit me harder, but I didn't misspell Bible when I, when I was meditating on it. The Bible, the Word of God, is the stuff dreams are made of. Isn't that beautiful? Come on. The stuff dreams are made of right in here. Who am I, Lord? And you're reading the Bible and something jumps out at you. You will lay hands on the sick and see them recover. When you visited me in prison, oh man, there's something about that. When, when, when you gave a cup of cold water to the least of these, there's something about that. When you serve one another in love, Lord, there's something about that. There's something about that. That is the stuff dreams are made of. You know, when we come together and Carolyn and uh, Don are in the foyer, you know, they love reading. They, do you love reading? I thought you did. All right. They love reading. And you know what they're doing? They're fulfilling a dream that the Father had in their life. That just hit me. They're fulfilling a dream. Praise God. When Andrew's up here playing the bass, he's fulfilling my dream of having a bass player. No, no, no. But but he's fulfilling a dream. Now he may not have said, "Oh Lord, I heard you say to be a bass player." But this man picked up the bass faster than anyone I've ever seen pick up any instrument and be able to play it. Andrew, really, without flattering you or anything, but that was that was a, a gift from the Lord. To you, and guess what? It, it was it was to you, but it was to our church. And you're fulfilling God's dreams. This is stuff dreams are made of. And I need to just keep going here. But um, how do we how do we discover the dreams? Uh, you know, we don't we don't just choose our dreams. I want to one day I want to climb Mount you know Everest. Well, that's really not a dream I've ever had. I just put that out there just now. And some people do things like that. They just say, you know what would be great? Um, going to, um, you know, the Marshall Islands. And, the, and, and, and yet it's, it's never really been part of their desire or anything. And, and, you know, I'm getting off track here a little bit. But what I'm trying to say here, and what I am saying is, we have to discover who we are. The gifts that God's put in us. Some of it's experiment. When you just you, you start reading, you're like, I love this. I love reading. You know? Um, but but here, here's something that I want to point out. This is out of Romans 9. And it's interesting, this, this context here, but this stood up to me as I was reading it. It said this, So it is God who decides to show mercy. Who does to show mercy? Listen to the end of this though. 916. It says, we can neither choose it nor work for it. He's talking about a relationship with God. We can neither choose it nor work for it. You cannot, if you've never heard the Gospel, you can't choose Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Why? You've never heard of Jesus. You can never, neither choose it. People in this world are dead spiritually. They do not know. They can either choose it nor work for it. They can't be right enough. There's a sense on inside of every one of us that we're outside of Christ, we're condemned. There's something not right. But everybody else seems to be acting like it is, so I guess I'll just keep going. Mm -hmm. There's a, a sense of condemnation. Because that's a that's the Holy Spirit convicting the world they're condemned without Christ. So that's when a missionary comes into a... Uh, when, when, when Audrey comes to a, 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 a little village and she comes in, she goes, I can tell you how to be right with the Creator who made the universe. They're like, what are you talking about? That sounds interesting. I'd like to hear more about that. And, and here's what happens. Um, in the next chapter, in Romans 10, did I put that verse in there for you, or just 10, 13? Or, yeah, let's go ahead. We'll start at 10, 13. So this is the next chapter. And this, this is, this is uh, what the Word of God tells us our role is and how dreams come about. It says uh, in Romans 10, 13, it says, For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on Him 
to, to save them unless they believe in Him. And how can they believe in Him unless if they've never heard about Him? And how can they hear about Him unless somebody tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? And this is why the Scriptures say, How beautiful are the feet of the messengers who bring good news. Okay, so, so here, here's what we, we have here. We have this whole line of thinking that tells us, first of all, it says we can't choose God because we haven't heard of Him. And we can't work to be right enough because uh, you, you just can't do it. Only Jesus can do that. So here we have the church. That's you and me. We have been sent. We have the message. So we go to people, and guess what? There's people in Wise County that have never heard the gospel. What? There's, I was talking to a pastor in Alabama, and this girl stumbled into his church. She didn't have a clue why everybody was hugging one another. It made her a little nervous. Everybody's smiling. Why is everybody smiling? Why is everybody hugging? And, and she had never heard the gospel in Alabama. In, in Wise County, there's people like that as well. It's rare, I, I, I believe, because we're in the Bible belt. But you know what? Sometimes we tell people about religion more than we'll tell them about Jesus. And so they need to just hear the good news. So we, this is how this thing happens, y'all. Uh, the dreams have to be discovered. The dreams have to be discovered. So we can't just choose or we can't work for a dream. We, we just have to discover what God has, has called us to do. Each one of us. He has a purpose for each one of us. And it's up to us to discover that. And the main way we discover it is by getting our face in the Word of God. Amen. He's going to reveal Himself to you in the Scripture. Amen. But a dream, second of all, can be frustrating. We already said that earlier. But let's just take a look at this. A dream can be frustrating. There's a proverb in Proverbs 13, 12. And it says this. Uh, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. Okay, so hope deferred <coughs> makes the heart what? Sick. All right, frustrated, yeah. same kind of thing. Sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. So let's just take a look real quick here at a, a dream that is frustrated. Why is there a frustration? How many know God wants you to fulfill your calling in life? How many know he, He's rooting for you like a father roots for a little baby learning to walk? Or a little child who gets on their bike for the first time takes the training wheels off? Or gets up to bat? Come on! Gets up to bat! And the whole crowd's not even watching, but, but Father's watching that kid take a swing. Amen? Father's rooting him on. Amen? The fun run. How many, how many, how many have ever been to the fun run? You go and you see all these kids coming through, and then you hear one mom yelling for their, their kid. Listen, this is the way the Lord the Lord wants your His dreams fulfilled in your life. More than you do even. He wants to stir us up. So, I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about Joseph and, and Daniel, and, and how they were brought before the king. The, the kings had dreams. And in, in, in both cases... Daniel and in, in Josh and Joseph. We, we talked about Joseph a lot more this year. But the, the king was disturbed by the dream. And, uh, and, and Nebuchadnezzar was a little rougher than Pharaoh. He's like, if you you gotta tell you uh, you gotta tell me the dream. If you can't tell me the dream, I'm gonna tear your house up. And I'm going to kill you. And I'm going to kill your family. And everybody was like, man, we can't tell you what the dream means and we don't know what the dream is. And so he was, he was really putting the pressure on. But, but Pharaoh called in Joseph. <clears throat> Our, you know, Joseph was in prison. He was brought before Pharaoh to interpret this dream. He had two dreams. And it was about these cows. First dream was about cows. If you've ever had a dream about a cow... Awesome. He had seven cows come out of the Nile. They were fat, sleek. They were, they were, they were beasts. And then seven scrawny cows came out of the, the Nile in the stream. And these, these little cows ate up the other cows. 
Pharaoh's disturbed. Who's ever had a dream? You woke up and you're like, what was that? And then he had the same kind of dream, but it was with wheat. Plump, seven, uh, you know, plump things of, uh, of wheat and then seven scrawny things of wheat. And uh, the, the scrawnier ones depleted the, the big ones, the plump ones. Here's what happened. Just cutting through it. Um, just cutting through it. That's a great scripture, though. These thin, scrawny cows ate the seven fat cows. All right. <laughs> You know, don't don't commit that to memory, but that's a funny that's a good story. But anyway, so here, here's the deal. So we have uh, we have this scenario where Pharaoh is disturbed by his dream. He's frustrated. I have a dream. I don't know what it means. It feels important. I had it twice. And, and we find out from Joseph that that means that God has certainly decided it's going to happen. And that, but here's what happened. A man of God who, who spent his life listening to the Lord. He pressed in to know what God was saying. He, 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 Joseph was an amazing man. He never shook his fist at, at heaven, even though he went through trial after trial because he was righteous. And here he is standing before Pharaoh and he tells them what the dream means. And then he gives them the strategy. See, here, here, here's Joseph. He has a, he's an understanding. He says, I can't interpret these dreams, but God can. And, and he starts speaking what he intuitively knows. How does he know this? Because the Holy Spirit's inside of him. Because gifts have been given to him at birth for this moment. Amen. Calling. And God's gifts and callings are without repentance. You get to choose if you're going to yield them and, and, and let them get used for His glory. And when you do that, that's the sweet spot of life. That's the home run. That's the grand slam. Amen. And so, we, we have these, these uh, understandings. And then He gives them the strategy of what He should do with that dream. He says, this is what you should do. You know, and he gives them the strategy that this means seven years you're going to have uh, these uh, these years of prosperity. Put somebody in charge of collecting for the seven years after. Otherwise, the whole world's going to be destroyed and, and eaten up. And because Joseph was doing that, he saved Israel or Egypt, but also Israel. And really, Israel's the, the main point of this story. See, we're in Egypt, but it's still about Israel. And, and God saved Israel through this whole story. But if you look at Ephesians 4, and let's turn there if we can real quick. I think we've got a little bit of time here. Um, Ephesians 4. Do you have that one for me up there, brother? All right. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, Ephesians 4 17, and, and I, I like how it says it in the King James. I'm going to read it out of the NLT. It says, uh, With the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. Now, the King James says, Their understanding has been darkened. They don't have understanding. So don't live like them, is what Paul's telling them. He says, uh, their minds are full of darkness. They have wandered from the life God gives because they've closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. We're not supposed to live like that. Wondering what God's will is. Wondering if God loves us. Wondering what our call is in life. Wondering anything about all those things that, that are, are these life you know, issues. They have no sense of shame. They've left such the pleasures and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you've learned about Christ since you've heard about Jesus and have learned about the truth that comes from Him. So here we have this picture of this darkened understanding. And we're going to move off this now. But, but the thing is, you're under, the, the world's understanding is darkened. And when you give your heart to Jesus... 
there's an awesome thing that has taken place. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus, but your soul, your mind needs to be renewed. You're, you need to submit your heart to the Lord and, and ask for understanding. Because a dream without understanding of how to bring that about, without the strategy, is frustrating. And God wants you to know His will. He wants you to know uh, His plan. You may not know the beginning to the end. That's okay. Just take the next step. But if your understanding is darkened, if you're not pushing in, if you're if you're not taking time, you know it said that the uh, it said that the disciples' hearts were hardened because they had never considered the loaves and the fishes. And the things of God. Are you considering the things of God? Are you considering the Word of God? We don't want to be like the Word calls certain people spiritually dull. We want to be people who are spiritually in tune. Alright? This is the last point. How do we get understanding? We know in Romans chapter 12 it says this. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. By what? By changing the way you think. Then you will learn God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. So here we have somebody who is not allowing the world to conform them, but instead, they're turning to the thing that God's dreams are made of. Amen. The Word of God. So when we seek God, when we, uh, as it says, in Romans 10 that we, we didn't get to, but Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. That's a, another version. Now it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Hearing the good news about Christ. What has Christ done for you? When you hear that good news, the person who couldn't choose or couldn't work for it all of a sudden receives it. And, and now you're receiving understanding every time you open the Bible. Every time you open this, you're having a conversation with the Lord. He's speaking to your heart. You're saying, Lord, give me understanding. That's our prayer this year. Would you all just pray that with me? Throughout the year, just every time you open the Bible, God, give me understanding. And Lord, thank you for understanding. Amen. Amen. So, here's something that I, that I want to bring this to a close here, but... How, how do we how do we get understanding? And those are the, the ways with the word. But you gotta tune in. And you gotta tune out. So you can't tune in to the world and the word. The world and the word. That that one little letter makes a big difference. Amen. So if you're trying to listen to the world and the word, you're going to be double-minded, lukewarm, no enthusiasm in your faith. You're not going to be spiritually sharp. You're going to be spiritually dull. Because you're wanting to get information from both sources. If you want a dream, man, these people that I'm talking about, I want to be a Christian Disney World person. This person's, this guy's tuning into God. And he's tuning out of the world. Amen. So this month, I'm going to ask you to uh, to fast. I want you to consider something to fast. We we I called it fast years ago. It's the second time I've done it, I think. And uh, I had people sign up to, to to join me, and somebody came up to me later and said, "Don't ever put me on the spot like that again." So, um, you know, to me, fasting is is just part of Christianity. Um, and I don't practice it as, as often as I can. Don't, y'all don't judge me. I don't practice it as much as I should. And I'm getting back to practicing it this month especially. It's first fruits, beginning of the month. And, and here's the deal. Um, when you fast, this is the times I've heard God the clearest is the time after I've fasted something. And I know some people say, you know, I'm going to go on a, a, a 30 day fast and they don't eat or do anything like, you know, they just drink water or something. And I'm not asking for that. I'm just saying, take some time. I'm going to take one day a week 
And I'm just I'm fasting to, to get understanding. And what I'm doing is I'm tuning out the world. I'm not, I'm not on social media on that one day and this month. And, I, and, you know, Jules and I were talking about it. She said, Dad, can you imagine if we're all joining together this month in, in setting something aside and just pressing in and saying, Lord, give me understanding of my calling in this, in, in this world, but also in our church. If we were all coming together, fasting something, and praying for the church, and praying for God's purpose for our lives, that's pretty powerful. You know, um, there, there, when the church prays, things take place. Uh, Peter was set free, but the guy before him that was put in prison was beheaded. The only difference is, in the Bible, in Acts, the only difference was the church started praying for Peter. They were having a prayer meeting and Peter showed up at the prayer meeting because the angel had broken him out of prison. And they said, it must be Peter's ghost. Because we're praying right now for him and he's in prison. We don't really believe him. But he's in prison. <laughs> no, he was at their door knocking. I love that story. I love it. But here's the deal. We're going to... Yeah, I'm just going to encourage you to... And we'll start it next week. But if you'll, if you'll just take some time to think about, Lord, what can I set aside for the next uh, 21 days and, uh, and get off social media if that's an issue for you um, turn off the TV you know, these are just some suggestions what is dominating because I, I'll tell you here's the thing these influences get to us and we don't even know it if you're having dreams that are ungodly it's because there's an ungodly influence that's Speaking, it may just be TV. So, these are the things that uh, that will help us to gain understanding. You know, there, there's it's funny you talk to some people and uh, you say, "Hey, man, how you doing?" He said, "Man, just living the dream." And they're being sarcastic a lot of times when they say it. You know. They're, they're working hard and you know they're not happy at work or something. How you doing, man? Just work, just living the dream. You know? But how are we gonna live the dream? We're living the dream. Who's living the dream with me? You know, by faith, put your hand in the air with me just, just for a second. <laughs> I tricked you. No. No, we're gonna live the dream, amen. God's called us. Amen. He's called us all to live the dream that He has for us. And He's called us, and your dream fulfilled affects my dream fulfilled. Amen. It's the way He's put us all together. So just recap this morning as we're bringing this to a close. Know the dream God has for you. How are you going to know it? By getting in the Word. Second of all, get understanding on the steps to walk it out to fulfill it. And third, we get understanding when we seek Him. He'll show you who you are and how to fulfill things. When we tune in, but also tune out. Um, Andrew Womack has a big teaching on faith and unbelief. You can have faith, but if you have unbelief just as much, it just negates the faith that God has already put in your heart for whatever you're believing for, whatever you So I believe we're going to see some breakthroughs when we start doing this. We just take some time and we say, Lord, setting this aside, and I'm going to get in your Word, and I'm going to find the answers for these things I'm believing for. I'm going to meditate on those words. I'm going to turn to, you know, my dad told me years ago, I was fasting as a teenager, and he said, Kevin, fasting isn't just about not eating. It's about what you're doing with that time as well. So you say, I'm going to fast TV. But what are you going to do with that time now? And get in the Word. Because what you're doing is you're setting aside that time that's been pulling you away and you're just double timing it with the Word of God. It's going to help you to get stronger and stronger. Amen. Let me pray for you this morning. And uh, if you would just stand with me as we pray together. Father, I just praise you. I thank you for this church, for the calling you have on each one of us. 
I thank you for the power that you've deposited on each one of us, Lord. Lord, when we look in the book of Acts, we, we see the church that is alive and active, just like the Word of God, sharper than a two-edged sword. Lord, we see a church that way. And Father, today, we just look to you to, to help us to get understanding in each one of our callings, in each of the place that we all have, the understanding that you, you uh, want us each to have. Lord, help us. Lord, I'm praying that life would make sense. I'm praying that, that the, the, there would be so much fulfillment in each heart in this church that, that each believer here would, would, would not get up and feel like, man, just like the, the song says, it's Christmas, what have we done? Another year older. This year's over, this new one's begun, however the song goes, but Lord, we're, we're not just marking time. Lord, we're marked by You. We want to be Your children. We want to follow Your path. Lord, I'm going to be praying for this church. I'm going to, I want to see each person, Lord, get the break that they're believing for. I want the dreams fulfilled, not dreams deferred that make the heart sick. Not the frustration, but I pray You give each one of us strategies, the path that we're supposed to take. Some of us have the dream, but we've never known what to do with it. There's no understanding. The Lord, we just ask you today, as we cast all our cares on you by dreaming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all are blessed and dismissed in the name of the Lord. Thank y'all so much for coming.